Today, there is a more general knowledge of Commander Perry, his work and his success, and a vague understanding of the fact that Commander Perry's sole companion from the realm of civilization when he stood at the North Pole was Matthew A. Henson, a colored man. It was in June 1891 that I started on my first trip to the Arctic regions. Naturally, the impressions formed on my first visit to the land of ice and snow were the most lasting. But in the coming years, I was to learn more and more that such a life was no picnic and to realize what primitive life meant. It was not until July 6, 1908, with the Godspeed and good wishes of President Roosevelt, that the good ship named in his honor set sail again. From Etah to Cape Sheridan, which was to be our last point north in the ship, consumed 21 days of the hardest kind of work imaginable for a ship, actually fighting for every foot of the way against the almost impassable ice. The constant jolting, bumping, and jarring against the ice packs, forwards and backwards, the sudden stops and starts, and the frequent storms made work and comfort aboard ship all but impossible. We set out with jaws squared by anxiety. A false step by anyone would mean the end. Once started, there was no stopping. You know that we got across, but there were instants during the crossing when I had my strongest doubts. The captain had gone. Commander Perry and I were alone, save for the four Eskimos, the same as we had been so often in the past years, and as we looked at each other, we realized our position and we knew without speaking that the time had come for us to demonstrate that we were the men who, it had been ordained, should unlock the door which held the mystery of the Arctic. The memory of those last five marches from the farthest north of Captain Bartlett to the arrival of our party at the pole is a memory of toil, fatigue, and exhaustion. The commander gave the word, we will plant the stars and stripes at the North Pole, and it was done. On the peak of a huge paleocrystic floeberg, the glorious banner was unfurled to the breeze, and as it snapped and crackled with the wind, I felt a savage joy and exultation. From the building of the pyramids and the journey to the cross, to the discovery of the New World and the discovery of the North Pole, the Negro had been the faithful and constant companion of the Caucasian. I felt all that it was possible for me to feel that it was I, a lowly member of my race, who had been chosen by fate to represent it at this, almost the last of the world's great work. The long trail was finished, the work was done, and there was only left for us to return and tell the tale of the doing. When I reached the ship again and gazed into my little mirror, it was the pinched and wrinkled visage of an old man that peered out at me. But the eyes still twinkled and life was still entrancing. 